بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه أجمعين نعم الحمد لله نحن الآن في شهر مبارك في شهر شعبان نسأل الله عز وجل أن يبارك لنا فيه وأن يبلغنا شهر رمضان إن شاء الله يقول أمنا عائشة رضي الله عنها ما رأيته أي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في شهر أكثر صياما منه في شعبان فنفهم من, من هذا الحديث أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصوم عددا كبيرا من أيام شهر شعبان فيجب علينا أن نمشي على سنة نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم ونفعل كما كان يفعل في, في شعبان فلهذا اخترت كتاب أسرار الصوم من كتاب, إمام من كتاب الإمام الغزالي رحمة الله عليه إحياء علوم الدين وهو رحمه الله يتكلم عن بعض أسرار الصوم في هذا, في هذا, في هذا الفصل من الكتاب <coughs> So in شاء الله we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us tawfiq to say what is beneficial and to act upon that which is beneficial from that which is said <coughs> We have reached the month of uh, Sha'ban so um, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah, blesses this month for us and allows us to witness the month of Ramadan which is coming next. <coughs> One of the things that our, that our mother uh, used, uh, has said, has been recorded that she has said was, uh, is that um, I have not seen, she said, I, have, I, I did not see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fast in any month more than the month of Sha'ban, excluding Ramadan, of course. So meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast the month of Sha'ban uh, in ways that he, was, he did not fast uh, the other month right, of the year. So uh, being the followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it becomes uh, mandatory as loyal followers to, to uh, follow the footsteps of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the book, that is why the book that I chose for today's lecture is, is the book Ihya Ulum Deen and a particular shek, section of Ihya which is called uh, Kitab, uh, Kitab, uh, Kitab Asrar al Sawm, the, the book of the uh, secrets, the mysteries of fasting, in which Imam Al Ghazali tells us about some of the secrets of fasting. So let's begin. Inshallah, nabda. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah al-Ladhi a'zama ala ibadihi al-minna. Hatha, alaykum as-salam. Yabda'u al-Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah kitabahu hakadha. Alhamdulillah al-Ladhi a'zama ala ibadihi al-minna. Yani, جعل منة عظيمة على عباده وهو يقول لنا الآن ما هي هذه المنة يقول بما دفع عنهم كيد الشيطان وفنة بما دفع عنهم كيد الشيطان وفنة لماذا هذا المنة من الله عز وجل عظيمة لأنه بسبب عن طريق هذه المنة دفع عن عباده كيد الشيطان عن طريق هذه المنة التي هو التي هو يذكر يذكرها الآن إن شاء الله دفع الله عز وجل كيد الشيطان عن عباده ونسأل الله عز وجل أن نجعل أن يجعلنا من عباده المخلصين المخلصين إن شاء الله نعم بما دفع عنهم كيد الشيطان وفنه يعني دفع عنهم كيد الشيطان ومكره ورد أمله وخيب ظنه يعني بسبب عن طريق هذه المنة رد أمل الشيطان 
وخيب ظنه لأن الشيطان لعنه الله كان يظن أنه يضل الناس جميعا ولكن الله عز وجل قال, قال له كلا ليس هكذا نعم يعني ومن من من هم الذين لا يستطيع الشيطان أن يضلهم عباد الله عباد الرحمن عباد الله المخلصين المخلصين وهذا الذي نذكره الآن سلاح من أسلحة عباد الرحمن ورد أمله وخيب ظن إذ جعل الصوم حسنا لأوليائه وجنة وهذا هو المنة العظيمة الصوم جعل الصوم يعني جعل الله عز وجل الصوم حسنا لأوليائه وجنة يعني عن طريق, هذه عن طريق الصوم يحفظ الله عز وجل عباده كيف إن شاء الله إمام الإمام الغزالي يشرح لنا كيف يكون يكون هذه هذا الحفظ وفتح لهم به أبواب الجنة يعني وفتح الله عز وجل لعباده به بالصوم أبواب الجنة وعرفهم أن وسيلة الشيطان إلى قلوبهم الشهوات المستكنة وعرف عباده أن, أن طريق الشيطان للدخول في قلوبهم هو الشهوات الشهوات الخفية وأن بقمعها تصبح النفس المطمئنة ظاهرة الشوكة so inshallah let's translate in English because I, I may um, lose track of where I am so this is what Imam Al-Ghazali says rahimahullah he says all praise be to the one who made his bounties upon his slaves his servants great made his favors upon his uh, servants immensely great How and what is this favor, you may ask? What is this favor that Allah Azza wa has made immensely great upon His servants? He says, "Bima dafa anhum kaida shaytani wa fanna." Due to the fact that He, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, repelled from His servants the plots and trickery of Shaytan, the plots and the uh, trickery, the tricks of Shaytan. And he also rejected the hopes of shaitan. Allah Azza wa Jal rejected the hopes of shaitan through this favor that inshallah we will talk about in a second. Allah Azza wa Jal rejected the hopes of shaitan and, um, and uh, disappointed his, his, his thoughts. Basically, he, Allah Azza wa Jal made him very disappointed because what does shaitan want, us, uh, want, want to do? He wants all of us to stray from the straight path. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him very disappointed by not allowing him to do that. So what is this favor through which Allah Azza wa Jal has repelled the tricks of shaitan from his servants and has rejected the hopes and the thoughts of the suspicions of shaitan through it? إِذْ جَعَلَ الصَّوْمَ حِسْنًا لِأَوْلِيَائِهِ وَجُنَّةِ Allah Azza wa Jal did all of this when he made Fasting, a protection for his servants. Allah Azza wa Jal made fasting a protection for his, for his servants. And he also, through fasting, opened the doors of Jannah for them. And he taught them, Allah Azza wa Jal taught his servants, that the way that shaitan, the, the path that shaitan takes to reach their hearts and corrupt their hearts are the shahawat, or the lowly desires that human beings have. The, the desires that we uh, human beings share with all the other animals. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal taught his servants that the way shaitan reaches the qulub, the hearts of Bani Adam, is through this shahawat. These are like stepping stones for him. 
if you break these shahawat, if a human being is able to control these shahawat, shaitan Allah will have no way to reach the hearts of human beings. وَأَنَّ بِقَمْعِهَا تُصْبِحُ النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّةُ ظَاهِرَةَ الشَّوْكَةِ يعني بكسرها يعني بكسر هذه الشهوات تصبح النفس المطمئنة ظاهرة الشوكة ونستطيع أن نقول هنا المطمئنة ولو كان معرفة خبر النفس لأن فيه فائدة يعني وأن بقمعها تصبح النفس المطمئنة يعني النفس المطمئنة ظاهرة الشوكة يعني بقمع هذه الشهوات تصير نفس النفس المطمئنة وتصير ظاهرة الشوكة يعني القوة and he says <coughs> that through the breaking of, of these shahawat through the controlling of these shahawat <coughs> one's nafs one's soul reaches a higher status the status of an nafs al mutmainna the calm and, and, and satisfied nafs the nafs that is not always shaky right should I do this, should I not do this, that is always nervous, right? The, the, the nafs of the majority of the human beings that are, uh, that are living on earth are always in a state of iqtirab, right? They're always shaking, right? And the way a, a person is able to make sure that the nafs reaches a nafs at the state of tranquility and stillness and calmness and satisfaction is through breaking the shahawat. Because what is it that makes the nafs move around a lot? It is the shahawat, right? Always thinking, what should I do tomorrow? What should I do today? What happened uh, when I, I spoke to them? What, what happened when, I, when she spoke to me? What happened when he spoke to me, right? Because they have desires that they want to satisfy. However, if you're able to control this, the, these desires, what happened yesterday, what will happen tomorrow, right? What you said to that person, what that person said to you, right, doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't uh, move you around, right? Because you have a very still, very calm, very powerful, very satisfied nafs. And the only way we reach that nafs is through uh, breaking the shahawat. Naam. Fi qasmi naam. Zahirat al shawka. <coughs> في قسم خصمها قوية المنة يعني بقمع, يعني بقمع هذه الشهوات أولا صارت النفس النفس المطمئنة ثم صارت ظاهرة الشوكة ثم صارت قوية المنة right. قوية المنة uh, قوية uh, المنة بالإنجليزي يعني الميت uh, يعني أنتم أعلم مني باللغة العربية uh, ولكن بالإنجليزي يكون الميت uh, ربما يوجد كلمة أخرى في, في, في اللغة العربية للمنة هل يدري أحد كلمة أخرى للمنة؟ منة is courtesy منة this is بالضم نعم uh, نعم قوية المنة يعني uh, شديد القوى يعني هكذا المنة نرب نعم يعني بأسه ضد الشيطان نعم صحيح صحيح جميل جزاكم الله والصلاة على محمد نعم so basically let me translate this last point and through through the breaking of these shahawat through the breaking of these shahawat the nafs becomes uh, powerfully uh, mightful, meaning it becomes a powerful might, a might that cannot be reckoned with, a might ca that shaitan cannot go close to. Kama kana Umar radiallahu an. When uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Umar, uh, select, uh, if you took one path, shaitan would, uh, would change his path and take the other path, right? And this is, what, this is exactly what Imam al-Ghazali is talking about. والصلاة على محمد قائد الخلق وممهد السنة 
والصلاة يقال أن أن الصلاة منا لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدعاء ومن الله على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الرحمة ومن الملائكة له الاستغفار هذا يقول قالها قال هذا بعض العلماء ولكن نستطيع أن نقول أن الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة سر من أسرار من أسرار الله سبحانه وتعالى من الأسرار الذي توجد بين بين الله سبحانه وتعالى وبين نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وأيضا بيننا وبين الله سبحانه وتعالى وبين نبيه فإذا لا ندري كنها كنها الصلاة ولكن نعرف أنها شيء عظيم نعرف أنها شيء عظيم and then Imam Al Ghazali says that, that um, after the praising of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, salawat be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salawat be upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the leader of creation. Because indeed we say that he is the leader of believers and Muslims, which is true, but he's the le he's also the leader of creation. There is no one ahead of him. There is no better leader for anyone to take. He is in front of everyone. Whether they know it, whether they recognize it, whether they admit it or not, the Prophet ﷺ is the leader of all creation. Is the leader of all creation. <coughs> and even the Jamadat, as we know uh, about the, the, palm tr the trunk of the palm tree that cried, when the Prophet ﷺ left it, when the member was created for the Prophet ﷺ. So even the, everything in, in the universe treats the Prophet ﷺ as their leader. That is why when, when Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about those, those who rejected the Prophet ﷺ and chose animosity towards the Prophet ﷺ, he says, بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ He says, uh, they are even worse than animals. Because even animals, there is something in them that know the Prophet ﷺ is the leader. وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ ذَوِي الْأَبْصَارِ الثَّاقِبَةِ نعم يوجد توجد قاعدة في اللغة العربية إذا اجتمع افترق وإذا افترق اجتمع عندما يذكر المؤلف <تصفيق> آل فقط آل آل يشمل الصحابة والأتبع ولكن إذا يذكر آل وأصحاب كليهما آل آل لها مف... له مفهوم خاص والأصحاب له مفهوم خاص وهنا آل 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 النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هم أهل بيته وأصحابه أنتم تعرفون من هم أصحابه رضي الله عنهم جميعا ذوي الأبصار الثاقبة كان عندهم أبصار ثاقبة uh, So here the Mu'allif says and salawat be upon not only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but also upon the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Those who had penetrating sight Those who had penetrating sight Meaning they were able to see things at, for what they are, right? They were able to distinguish uh, reality from falsehood, truth from falsehood. And this is something we all struggle with in this, in this uh, generation, in the generation of technology, in the, genera in the time, in the era of technology, in the era of, of abundant fitan, right? It is very hard... <clears throat> And even these days, uh, who speaks English? Uh, do the young kids speak English? Everyone speaks English? Okay. So what you will be exposed to in the next <coughs> decade will even take you further from reality. Everything that is coming out like Apple Vision Pro and a Metaverse, you know, you put something in your, on your eyes and you see a different world. And it literally feels like you're there with them. As, just as I am speaking to you right now, if I put those on and those, uh, you know, the, the cameras are actually, uh, in, in, for example, in, let's say, uh, Europe, 
Yeah, no, so 3D, not only 3D, so this, speak, um, it is 3D, but it is, uh, it is so real, it is not like the 3D movies you watch on TV, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, not for, only for the game, it, it is actually, it become, it, some people say it will become the next um, way people will use com computers, mm -hmm. right? So you will not type anymore, so you're, uh, you're just looking somewhere and you're moving your hands, right? So it becomes very important for all, you know, for everyone to always... Um, be able to distinguish between reality and and falsehood. So by falsehood, not this doesn't necessarily mean become the falsehood meaning in meaning uh, kufr. However, it is not real. It is possible that some people actually may get loose in it and prefer living in those environments rather than living in reality. Right. So this is actually this is a fitna that the young generation will go through. And may Allah Azza wa Jalla protect uh, all of our, uh, all of our um, youngsters. Like a Photoshop. So, for, so even more advanced. So basically, you you imagine you put on a glass. You're in Iraq. You're you put on a glass, and as you're looking at me right now, you you would be looking at me from Iraq. So you would you would see everyone around you. Uh, just as if you're looking at me right now, so, you know, there's absolutely like very minor differences. So it is very hard to confuse reality from falsehood. Yeah, yeah so the, the, what they call, uh, uh, this is not an advertisement, what is it? Visual reality. Yeah, it's called augmented reality, virtual reality. And uh, late, uh, the, the, uh, pre, you know, uh, last week, uh, Apple came up with this, call, this thing called Apple Vision, Vision Pro. Yeah. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is not to advocate for it, but rather to make sure that our, uh, you know, our, um, our community is aware of the dangers that uh, it can cause. Even though there will be benefits as well, but we also, the, you know, daf al um, uh, is always uh, takes precedence over jalb uh, al right? It's always the, the, the first thing that takes priority is repelling harm. And then once we are, we are able to repel, repel harm, then we will uh, benefit from the things that are beneficial in it. So that is why I mentioned this. And why do I mention it? Because the Prophet, the, the, the Imam al-Ghazali, who uh, um, Yasif al-Sahaba, uh, radiyallahu anhum, bianna kana indahum absar thaqiba. Absar thaqiba. Yani kanu, uh, kanu yufarriqoon bayna al-haqi wa al-batil. Uh, يعني, uh, uh, يعني uh, uh, نعم <coughs> ثم يصفهم بأنهم ذو ذو الأقول المرجحة عندهم الأقول المرجحة يعني يفرقون بين الحق والباطل وأيضا عندما يوجد اختياران يرجحون الأفضل من ال من ال من ال من الآخر يعني كل كلاهما حلال ولكن يرجحون الأفضل الذي أكثر منفعة على على الذي أقل من أقل منفعة وهذا هو العقول المرجحة كما كما كان الفقهاء يرجحون بعض الآراء على على آراء أخرى نعم وهكذا يعني كانوا صفاتهم كان هكذا كانوا عندما يرون شيئا عندما كانوا يرون شيئا كانوا يرجحون الأفضل من ويدعون الآخر نعم <coughs> and also they had uh, intellects that were able to, uh, you know, pick which is which is best. <coughs> it is one thing to differentiate between truth and falsehood, right? <coughs> and it is another to pick what is best between those things that are mubah, that are permissible, right? Because even that, uh, if you're able to. The, the first level is differentiating between truth and falsehood. And then the second level, within the realm of truth and mubah and permissible, 
are you able to pick what is the most beneficial, right? So the, uh, the Sahaba were able to do that. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal allowed them to reach the stations that they reached, right? To accomplish the things that they accomplished. Um, again, if we want to make a difference and uh, change the situation that we live in, we must try to reach this, this state. That our absar, our thaqibah, we have penetrating sight, differentiating between truth and falsehood. And that we have al-uqul al murajjaha We have intellects that within the realm of mubah, permissible, are able to pick that which is more beneficial. That is w which is most beneficial. May Allah Azzawajal grant us the tawfiq to reach this station. Um, Naam. <clears throat> نعم والصوم يكون سببا للوصول إلى الإحسان وكما تعلمون الإحسان أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإن فإنه يراك نعم و والصوم طرق طريق أو سبب مؤثر جدا للوصول إلى إلى الإحسان ونستطيع أن نقول سبب أكثر تأثيرا من الأسباب الأخرى في الوصول إلى الإحسان لماذا؟ لأننا عندما نصوم ندع الطعام وندع الشراب نعم وندع الغيبة وهذه الأشياء الذي نهانا الله عز وجل ورسوله منها فعندما تشعر بالجوع ماذا تقول لنفسك ماذا نقول لأنفسنا هذا أفعل هذا لوجه الله سبحانه وتعالى عندما نشعر بالعطش ماذا نقول هذا لوجه الله سبحانه وتعالى عندما نشعر بالتعب ماذا نقول هذا لوجه الله سبحانه وتعالى ودائما دائما يعني صومنا يذكرنا بالله سبحانه وتعالى يذكرنا بصفات بصفات الله سبحانه وتعالى يذكرنا بعطائه بعطائه ايانا اجرا كبيرا ان شاء الله في الجنه وعندما يعني نحفظ السنتنا من الغيبه نفعلها لان لاننا نعلم الغيبة طبعا لا يجوز لنا أن أن نتكلم عن الناس سواء كان في رمضان أو غير رمضان ولكن الغيبة ينقص من من أجرنا في في رمضان ولهذا عندما نتكلم نحفظ ألسنتنا من مما لا يرضى به الله سبحانه وتعالى نحفظ ألسنتنا مما لا يرضى به الله سبحانه وتعالى فإذا دائما نحن في 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 مرتبة الإحسان نعبد الله عز وجل كأن كأننا نراه في في حال الصيام ولهذا يكون سببا من مؤثرة مؤثر سببا مؤثر جدا مؤثرا جدا للوصول إلى درجة الإحسان ويقول ويقول إمام الغزالي فلما كان الصوم على الخصوص قمعا للشيطان وسدا لمسالكه وتضييقا لمجاريه استحق التخصيص بالنسبة إلى الله عز وجل نعم <coughs> So inshallah I will translate Do the youngsters understand Arabic perfectly? All of you? Okay you used to understand. So I'm also recording to, for the people that are watching. I want to translate, inshallah, if you don't mind. Um, so, and that basically, that was the introduction of Imam, Imam, Imam al-Ghazali for the book of the mysteries of fasting. For the book of the mysteries of fasting. And it was a beautiful introduction, as, as you heard. Even when we said it in English, it was beautiful because it came from a beautiful heart. The, the heart of Imam al-Ghazali, Hujjat al-Islam. Uh, and he, he is uh, um, uh, perhaps um, one of the scholars that have, has had the most impact uh, on Muslim society, uh, both in the past and 
uh, currently at this time. So one of the benefits of fasting is that it allows us to reach a state of ihsan. And ihsan is that is the, when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we see him. And this is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained it. For if we do not see him, he sees us. <clears throat> so why does fasting becomes a shortcut to ihsan? Right? Because it always reminds, of, uh, reminds, of, uh, reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when you feel thirst, when you're fasting, what prevents you from breaking your fast? Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Remembering that you're doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we feel thirst you know, throughout the whole day sometimes. So you're always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you were feeling hunger, right? When feeling, who do you think about when you're hungry, when you're fasting? Do you fast? Yeah. We think about, <laughs> we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And sometimes we are hungry throughout the whole day. When we feel tired, right? Or when we protect our tongues from, uh, from uh, uh, saying things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is preventing us from doing it? the fact that we're in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we're fasting, we're actually constantly thinking and knowing that I am fasting, I am not supposed to do these things. And I, inshallah, may Allah Azza wa Jal make all of us from this category because I do realize that, uh, you know, the fasting of certain individuals, may Allah protect us uh, from this trait, is not up to par to what I'm uh, mentioning. However, though they are a very minority that are doing it just for the sake uh, of uh, fitting into the community, <laughs> right? But alhamdulillah, uh, the majority of Muslims and all of you, may Allah Azza wa make us from those who actually reach the highest level of fasting. <clears throat> and then Imam Al-Ghazali says, he says something very interesting and I think it's very important, especially in the, in the context that we live in today. <clears throat> He says when, when, when fasting in particular was a way to break shaitan <clears throat> and block his ways to the heart, it deserved to be associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> it deserved to be associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَصَوْمُ لِي وَأَنَا أَزِّبِهِ Fasting is for me, and I will reward you for it. I will reward the, uh, the person who is fasting for it. So Imam Al-Ghazali says, because fasting in particular is very powerful in defeating shaitan, it became worthy or it, or it deserved to be associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> because who is the creature that disobeys Allah azza wa the most? It is shaitan, right? And he is the enemy of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the enemy of human beings and the re religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you actually defeat the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually doing something that is directly associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? which is fasting. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me. You're defeating my enemy. You're defeating the enemy of my religion. Shaitan is not at a level to be Allah's enemy. Do we have to understand this correctly? No one is Allah's enemy. Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of everything. Shaitan is the enemy of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Right? Shaitan is the enemy of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Because when we say shaitan, um, uh, uh, in the, in the sense that, so two, two, two beings that are enemies, they need to be on the same level, right? When you give <laughs> shaitan la'anahullah, the title of being the enemy of the most powerful, you're actually t giving him a higher, high status, right? However, when Allah Azza wa Jal describes uh, his creatures, that is for him, right? Uh, so I just wanted to make that distinction on why I said that I didn't, didn't want to give shaitan a lot of credit. <laughs> so with that said, um, 
when you're defeating the enemy of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually allying with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever the silah that you're using is actually associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the weapon that you're using is associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why he says uh, fasting is for me and I will reward the person who fasts for it. Right? And uh, now, why did I say it is important to our client? لماذا هذا مهم جدا لنا الآن؟ لأننا نرى عن بعيد أن إخواننا يقتلون في في غزة الصغير منهم والكبير منهم ونسأل أنفسنا والذين يفعلون هذه الأشياء هم أولياء الشيطان طبعا الصهيونية هم أولياء الشيطان يفعلون ما يريد الشيطان لعنه الله أن يفعله فنقول لأنفسنا ماذا علي أن أفعل ماذا أستطيع أن أفعل في هذا, في, في هذا الفتنة <تصفيق> والجواب الذي بعضنا نصل إليه هو أنني لا أستطيع أن أفعل شيء لأن, الأبو... لأن الأبواب كلها مغلقة صحيح؟ كثير منا يعني نظن هذا ولكن الذين يقاتلون إخواننا والذين إخواننا يقاتلونهم في الغزة هم أولياء الشيطان هم الشيطان صحيح؟ فلنا أيضا حرب مع الشيطان إذا استطعنا أن نهزم الشيطان هنا في أنفسنا في الحرب بين, بين, بين أنفسنا وبين الشيطان نصرنا دين الله سبحانه وتعالى لأن في, في باب في عالم الأرواح يوجد تأثير في هذا عندما نحن يكون لنا غلب على الشيطان هنا يكون لهم غلب على الشيطان هناك إن شاء الله وهذا مهم جدا أن نعرف فلهذا كلما نفعل شيئا لا يرضى الله عز وجل به يجب علينا أن, أن نقف أنفسنا ونقول لأنفسنا أن, أن هذا يضر إخواننا في فلسطين أن هذا يضر إخواننا في الغزة أن هذا يضر إخواننا في كل مكان so um, why why does Imam Al Ghazali mention uh, fasting in such a way? <clears throat> because fasting is one of the primary ways that a person defeats uh, defeats shaitan. Fasting is one of the prim primary ways that the person defeats the shaitan, and Shaitan, as we know, he is the enemy of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by defeating Shaitan through fasting, right, we have actually aided the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why I said it's, it's important in our context is, is because the people that are actually killing our brothers and sister and, uh, sisters in Gaza, right, unjustly, whether they're uh, kids, uh, elderly men, women, they are actually the awliya of shaitan. They are, they are the allies, allies of shaitan. They are doing what shaitan wants them to do. Right? And in, in, the, in, the, in the realm of the unseen, in the alam al-ghayb, there are connections that we do not see. So that is why <clears throat> fasting in particular and anything that defeats shaitan, it becomes important for us in the, uh, here in the U.S. Because by defeating shaitan here, his awliya get defeated there. This is part of alam al-ghayb that we do not understand. Right? We are all connected. Why does the Prophet sallallahu says, yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. The, the, the example of the believer is like a bunyan, like a building. One piece reinforces the other. And this is in all, uh, from all aspects. Whether you're here or sitting next to them in Gaza, you can actually reinforce your brothers in Gaza. You, are, you can reinforce your brothers in Palestine. 
and this has to do with the unseen that many of us will, will not get uh, exposed to. However, actually there are, um, obviously the awliya were exposed to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophets were exposed to this. Um, uh, that is why uh, in, in the Battle of Tabuk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to experience everything that was going on. Right? He was telling his Prophet, uh, <clears throat> uh, this person took up the, the flag and he, he, uh, asab, he, he, got, he got killed. The other person until Khalid ibn Walid uh, picked up the flag. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not there and seeing them, or like in person, right? Um, and uh, there's a saying, and Imam Umar had an experience as well. Uh, there was a Sahabi, I believe, called uh, Sariya, and he was in a battle. <coughs> and Imam Umar, all of a sudden, everyone heard him, Sariya al Jabal al Jabala, or Kamaqala, radiallahu anhu. And Imam Umar was not in the battle, Sariya was in a battle. And Imam uh, Umar actually called out to him, tell, telling him, use the mountain in the battle and Imam Umar was not there right so so these are some of the things that actually we believe in and actually they have been recorded and have been passed down to us whether it's from the stories of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the stories of the Sahaba and the Awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from those who who act upon what they hear and what they teach Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun Wa Salamun Ala Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Jazakumullah Khair What's your name?